The Seattle Mariners bullpen is a bigger problem than you realize. Let's talk about it. So in the mix of everything that's going on with the Seattle Mariners this season, the one thing that seems to be really overlooked is the Seattle Mariners bullpen. And when I mean overlooked, I don't really mean in a positive way. So in today's video, I want to be discussing some of the bigger problems with the Seattle Mariners bullpen and some things that we just really don't think about because it's so masked by the offense, that how bad the offense was this year, and we don't even really think about it. So I'm going to go into some of those details today on some guys who are really underperforming compared to where they were last year, and also just the massive importance of missing a few guys in this bullpen. So for starters, let's talk about the obvious, and that is missing Matt Brash all this season. Matt threw over 70 innings last year for the Mariners. He's the go-to guy whenever you need to get out of a jam, whenever you need to win a game. He is the guy that the Mariners would go to, and we all know that. So missing him was already a huge step in the Seattle Mariners bullpen season when you just don't have him for the entire season. While on top of that, you have guys like Yaimi Garcia, who you acquired at the deadline, who only pitched nine innings for you before he was hurt. And then you have guys like Ryan Stanek, who, you know, isn't even a Mariner anymore and really just completely underperformed in his time here. And to add on to that, you have Gregory Santos, who was supposed to be another fiery guy out of your bullpen to match with Brash and Munoz. And he's only pitched five innings for the Mariners this year because he cannot stay healthy. And when I kind of talk about the importance of missing someone like Matt Brash, I want to put this kind of into perspective for you guys. So last year, as we know, we also had Justin Topa, who pitched about 69 innings for the Mariners as well last season. So last year combined, Brash and Topa threw for 139.2 innings. Now for some main pieces that were supposed to be big in our bullpen this year, and also some surprise pieces, you have Colin Snyder, Troy Taylor, Austin Voth, Yaimi Garcia, and Gregory Santos. Those five pitchers combined have only pitched 120 innings. And I say only, only because that's five pitchers this season that have pitched 20 less innings than two pitchers did last year. So my point of that is saying is not having somebody that can match Topa's innings and success and also not having Matt Brash, who threw most of the innings in relief last year for the Mariners, is already a huge downgrade in terms of just the number of innings pitched. Now, on top of that, there are two guys that I want to discuss that were huge pieces for the Mariners last year in terms of the bullpen that were super clutch when we needed them, and that is Gabe Spire and Taylor Saucedo. And this year, unfortunately, they are just not doing anything near to what they did last season. Even though Saucedo's numbers aren't that drastically different last year compared to this year, his innings are down by 11.2 innings, which is still a decent amount when it comes to bullpen arms. And someone like Gabe Spire, who is literally in AAA as we speak, and last season he threw 54.2 innings for the Mariners, and this season he's only at 20.2. So that is 34 innings that you were missing from Gabe Spire, who was awesome last year for the Mariners, and this year he just has not been able to figure it out. But as you can see recently, there isn't that much trust in too many other guys when it comes down to, you know, only being up by one or two runs. It's been the same order. The Mariners go, you know, quality start from the starter like always. And then somehow it goes Taylor, Snyder, and Munoz to close out the entire game, which is awesome. It's an awesome three to have. But again, that is not something sustainable to rely on three guys to hold, hold out. And you're going to see what you saw last night. Snyder did not have a good game last night. You could say he blew the game. He got the loss. So that's going to happen. It's sports. So I'm not going to sit here and blame him. He's been awesome this year. But that is one thing that you kind of just you can't rely on doing the same thing over and over and over again. Troy Taylor was in double A like two months ago, and he's been great ever since being here, but already having to put him every single day when you're just up by one, two, or three runs is something that's just not going to keep working over and over and over again. Eventually, you're going to see what you saw last night from Snyder and just a complete collapse. But now let's kind of talk about everyone's favorite number. And as we know, the Seattle Mariners were 44 and 31 at some point this season, and specifically on June 18th after they beat the Guardians to make them 44 and 31 on the season. So we're going to go into some numbers on where the bullpen ranks since June 18th to really show you how much they have struggled and how much we have all as fans just completely overlooked it because we've been so fixated on the offensive struggles. So since June 18th, the bullpen has a 7-18 and 18 record with only nine saves, which is the second lowest in all of baseball over that span. And one common theme you're going to continue to see is a lot of things go back to the starting pitching. So when we talk about offense, we talk about how good our starting pitching is and the offense can't help them. And in this video, it's going to be very similar how good the starting pitching is for us and then how much the bullpen really just can't back them up. So since June 18th, they have 222.2 innings pitched as a bullpen, which is the lowest in all of baseball. And that is obviously due to our amazing pitching staff that gets so many quality starts, goes into seventh so many times because they are just that dominant. So that is why the bullpen has the lowest amount of innings pitched over this span, which make these numbers even that much worse that they are still so low in some categories. So the one thing I'm going to give them credit for is they do have a 10.06 K per nine, which is sixth in all of baseball. So that is one thing they are definitely very good at is striking guys out. But here is where the problem lies. 
So for starters, they have a 3.48 walk per nine, which is the 10th highest in all of Major League Baseball. And here's also, as we know, watching that A's and Angels series where they just got walked off three times. They have a 1.50 home run per nine, which is the second highest in all of Major League Baseball across that span. They have really struggled this year, and you could see it game in and game out that they struggle to keep the ball in the park. They do have a 3.92 ERA, which is 13th in baseball across that stretch. But here is another painful statistic is they have a negative 0.9 war, which is the second worst behind the Toronto Blue Jays, who had a negative 1.5 war in that span. And that is just so bad. A negative 0.9 war, second worst in baseball ever since being 10 games up in the division. That is just not going to get the job done. Really, realistically, you just have a lot of guys that are very much underperforming. Someone like Trent Thornton was fantastic last year for the Blue Jays and for the Mariners. And this year he's, you know, he's had a lot more innings maybe, but he just has not been that guy that he was last year. His ERA is almost doubled, if not more. And just guys like that, they're just not getting the job done. And that's where missing somebody like Brash or, you know, Munoz can get into the eighth. So you don't really have to worry about somebody else going out for the eighth. You can have Munoz and then have Brash. But nonetheless, they're just missing a lot of aspects that have just been completely overlooked by us Mariners fans. So while yes, realistically, injuries have absolutely hurt this bullpen and not made them as dominant as they could have been, there also are a lot of guys that are completely underperforming. But there are some surprise guys like Troy Taylor, Colin Snyder, they're doing pretty well. Austin Voss is having a pretty good year. So those are some nice surprises. But at the end of the day, you know, Matt Brash is hurt. Yami Garcia is hurt. Gregory Santos is hurt. These are all guys that were supposed to just do great things this year. And Yami Garcia, got, they got at the deadline to come in and hopefully make some impact, save some games, but he got hurt. So I can't necessarily blame them fully, but these are pretty bad numbers from the guys that, you know, we've relied on, you know, Taylor Saucedo, we've relied on a lot. All these guys that we've relied on who just are not performing at the top of their game and they haven't been for most of the year. So I figured I'd share some of this knowledge with you guys because I feel like, like I said, that it is very overlooked by us Mariners fans, the how bad this bullpen has really been this year and how much it really has hurt us. 7-18 and 18 record is not good. And you're not really expecting record. Record to me isn't a huge thing because we've seen Logan Gilbert. Logan Gilbert should have 18 wins this year, but somehow he doesn't because I just not a huge win and loss guy, but a 7-18 and 18 record is not good. That means at the end of the day, they're blowing games more than they're saving them. As we know, nine saves. So that is not something that we really want to see, and that is something they have struggled with clearly for most of the year, since especially June 18th. But please let me know what you guys think about the bullpen and maybe some pieces that they have to go add next year into the winter. So let me know what you guys think. But otherwise, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.